It's time for algebra, solving multiplication and division equations. Might help us to remember about inverse operations. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction, and the inverse operation of multiplication is division. Inverse of subtraction is addition, inverse of division is multiplication. So if we were to multiply by 2, the inverse and the opposite of multiplying by 2 would be dividing by 2. Those would be inverse of each other. If we were to divide by 6, the inverse of dividing by 6 would be multiplying by 6. If we were to multiply by 3, the inverse operation to go with multiplying by 3 would be divided by 3. Inverse operations. All right, let's use an inverse operation to help us to solve this multiplication equation. b times 4 equals 28. So we have b times 4 here, and this times 4 is what we're going to go ahead and work to go ahead and get rid of by dividing by 4 on both sides of the equation. b times 4 divided by 4 just leaves us with b. And 28 divided by 4 is 7, so b equals 7 is our solution. Plugging that back in, 7 times 4, does it equal 28? And the answer to that is yes, it does. This is our check work for that solution. Another type of problem, c times 3 equals 18. Again, we see this times 3. And this is what we're going to go ahead and look at to go ahead and figure out that inverse operation. c times 3, so we go ahead and divide by 3. So on the left-hand side, really what I'm doing is I'm taking c, I'm multiplying it by 3, then I'm dividing it by 3, which are inverse operations. So that just leaves us with c. 18 divided by 3 is 6. c equals 6 is our solution. Does 6 times 3 does it equal 18? Plugging 6 back into our original equation and rewriting it out. Evaluating it, 6 times 3 is 18. 18 does equal 18, and I get a check mark. Now, if this check here did not work, then I know my work here, that there was something wrong with my work there. So again, the big thing is inverse operation. Here I have 10 equaling e divided by 2, and then so that's the same type of problem where it says divided by 2, and then so I'm going to go ahead and multiply by 2. If I do that on one side of the equation, I must do it on the other side of the equation as well. Rewriting this out this time, 10 times 2 equaling e divided by 2 times 2. Right hand side evaluates to e. That's why I multiplied by 2 there. And 10 times 2 is 20. So that e equals 20. Do not get confused that the variable was on the right side of the equation this time. Here are two problems for you to go ahead and try. Go ahead and hit pause. Find the solution for them. For the first problem, it says divided by 4, so we'll multiply by 4 on both sides of the equation. 8 times 4 is 32. f divided by 4 times 4 just leaves us with f. 32 is equal to f, or f equals 32. Does 8 equal 32 divided by 4? And the answer to that is yes, it does. 8. Does it equal... 32 divided by 4, and yes, it does. For my next one here, 2 equals g divided by 6. It would have been the same as if it had been g divided by 6 equals 2. Again, I multiply by 6 on both sides of that equation. The inverse operation of divided by 6. g divided by 6 times 6 just leaves us with g. 2 times 6 is 12, so g equals 12 is my solution. Again, looking at our original equation, 
does 12 divided by 6, does it equal 2? And yes, it does. Please do not make this mistake. If you see this equation here where it says 4 equals 20 divided by q, the thing that you may not do is that you can't say um, times 20 on both sides. This is saying divided by q, divided by q. Technically, so it's really 20 divided by some number equaling 4. And then we know that it's 20 divided by 5 equaling 4. I would accept that as work. Q equaling 5. Plugging it back in, Q equaling 5, does 4 equal 20 divided by 5? And the answer to that is yes, it does. Now, technically, you can use that same type of approach where you went 20 divided by q, and then you multiply by q. So since we multiply q by one side, you do the same thing on the other. That would leave you with 4 times q equaling 20, and then in that case, q equals 5. Because 4 times 5 equals 20. We're going to see about how to solve these multiplication type problems. All right, here's a multiplication type problem. 3m means 3 times m. 3 of m or 3 times m, equaling 15. I can rewrite that as m times 3 equaling 15. And then in this case, I look at times 3. And the inverse operation of that is divided by 3. So I can divide both sides by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5 m times 3 divided by 3 just leaves us with m. So m equals 5 is our solution. Again, 3m equals 15 means 3 times m. Does 3 times 5 equal 15? This is my check work. Does 3 times 5, does it equal 15? I plugged 5, my answer in there, for m. And the answer to that is yes, 15 does equal 15 it is the appropriate and valid solution. m does equal 5. Here we have the equation 5r equals 20, and then so that's 5 times r. 5 times r. And then so the 5 times, hey, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 5 then. 5 times r divided by 5 just leaves us with r. 20 divided by 5 is 4, so r equals 4. Our check work again, does 5 of r, does 5 times 4, does it equal 20? 5 times 4 is 20, so that 20 equals 20. Here are two problems for you to try. Remember, 3d means 3 times d. Go ahead and hit pause, solve for each of those variables. Here's your work for that first one. We'll divide by 3 on both sides of that equation. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 3d divided by 3 is just d, so d equals 5 is our solution. Here's our check. Does 3 times 5, does it equal 15? 3 times 5 is 15, so that 15 does equal 15, and I get my check mark. For my other problem here, it says e times 4. So I divide by 4 on both sides of the equation. 32 divided by 4 is 8. e times 4 divided by 4 just leaves us with e, so e equals 8. Did you do your check work? Would you know how to check, set up your check work? Hopefully you do. Again, plug in the e equals 8. Anytime you see an e, replace it with an 8. 8 times 4, does it equal 32? 8 times 4 is 32, and so that does equal 32, so I get my check mark. Here is your review. We'll take a look at the last couple of problems here. Here it says 20 minus 4 equaling 2b. I can evaluate and make this equation simpler by 
taking those two numbers and actually subtracting them. 20 minus 4 is 16 equals 2b. Remember that 2b means 2 times b, and so that is a common mistake for students. We'll go ahead and divide both sides by 2 then to go get rid of the 2 times, that inverse operation. That leaves us on the right-hand side of the equation as just b. 16 divided by 2 is 8, so that b equals 8. Again, 2 of b, 2 of 8, is 2 times 8. 2 times 8, which is 16, which does equal the 20 minus 4, which was on the left-hand side of the equation originally. For my other problem here, again, inverse operation, that is going to be your key. This is already nicely simplified for us, so we don't do anything with it. Divided by 6, inverse times 6 on both sides of the equation. 30 times 6 is 180. C divided by 6 times 6 is just C, so C equals 180. Is that possible? You know what it is. 180 divided by 6 from this side of the equation right here, does it equal 30? And you can go through that check work. 3 can't go into 1, 3 can go into 18 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 18 is 0. Bring down the 0. 0 divided by 6 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0, and 0 minus 0 is 0. It checks as well.